It's time for Tycoons of Small Biz, spotlighting the true backbone of the American economy, the true tycoons of business in America, the owners, founders, and CEOs of small businesses. The show's hosts, Austin Peterson and Landon Mance, are registered representatives of Lincoln Financial Advisors Corporation, a broker-dealer, member SIPC, and registered investment advisor. The views expressed by your hosts, Austin and Landon, are not necessarily the views of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Let's lean in as Austin and Landon connect with this week's Tycoons. Hey, welcome. It's Kara Nowicki, Phoenix Business Radio X owner and host of several shows. Today, I get to play host an interviewer for Austin and Landon. We don't have guests outside of these two gentlemen who host Tycoons of Small Biz. Uh, We're going to flip the script. Today I'll be asking them a few questions about uh, them, get to know them a little bit, what they're up to, and how they serve the business community. Welcome to your own show, (laughs) 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 Landon Mans and Austin Peterson. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, I got to tell you, it's a little a little different to not be the guy to kick off the show. So it's uh, interesting to sit back and listen to you kick off the show for us. If I'm not going to ask how I did because I know you'll <laughs> you'll critique me. <laughs> hey, you did better than I've ever done. So <laughs> have you ever had a chance to do it? I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Well, 2021, we're gonna we're gonna have Landon That's do right. it. That's right. Okay. Well, I I'm really excited when uh, was really excited when you said, hey, let's let's do kind of an end of the year recap or you know let's move into 2021. Uh, so often when our hosts uh, are shining the spotlight on other business owners and executive leaders, uh, we, we don't often get to talk a lot about who we are and, and how we serve the community. So I would love for uh, us to take time to do that today. Uh, I would love for both of you to just get started by telling us a little bit about who you are personally and uh, maybe your favorite thing about uh, hosting your own show, Tycoons of Small Biz, and why, why you feel like it's an important uh, contribution to the business community. Austin, would you start for us first? Yeah, so um, I was born and raised in Provo, Utah, and uh, was actually convinced I was on my way to law school until I took a, uh, a class in high school as a freshman uh, it was an elective class, and it was called Entrepreneurship and Stock Market. Mm. And so I, I took that class, and it kind of changed my whole trajectory. And and uh, and I decided, you know what, law school is not where I'm gonna where I'm gonna go. Business is where I belong. And and I was intrigued by the stock market thing. And you know, not to date myself too much, but uh, you know, when we did research on stocks that we had to buy with a a phantom portfolio that we put together. Uh, we were looking in the in the newspaper for news and and stock quotes and and all those sorts of things. It was very different than than they do this very often nowadays in school and in, in college and high school and and it's all internet based. But uh, for me, it was the newspaper. So you know, I I grew up doing all kinds of things. Uh, I'm an adrenaline junkie. My mom's called me that since I was very young. So I raced motorcycles, uh, snowboarded, anything that uh, that got the adrenaline pump, and I was I was involved in it. You said was. Are you still? How are you getting your adrenaline fix these days? <laughs> well, I, I still I still uh, I still love to ride motorcycles. I don't currently own a motorcycle, but uh, I've got some friends that do, and so I go out and ride motorcycles with them from time to time. Um, and just you know, I still snowboard. I've been snowboarding for thirty years, so you know, I, I the original snowboard that I had, Landon probably never even saw one of these, but it had a. A, you know, a, a triangle shape at the front instead of the rounded front edge. And so that's that's how long I've been snowboarding. So I do, I do still try to get up to Utah and do that at least once a year. And, um, you know, m- now I get an adrenaline rush by being a, a father of, of teenagers. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 well, one teenager now, I guess, and the other one is actually 20 years old now. So Yeah, and he's on a mission. He is. Yeah, he's on a mission for our church. He comes home two weeks from today. Home, home? Home, home. Wow. Yep. Yep, he will be done, and he lands. He's scheduled to land at Sky Harbor at six p.m. So on uh, the on the fifteenth. Yep. Ah, oh, that's exciting. And it's been a year. Uh, two years. Two year commitment. Yep. Wow. Yep, and I did the same thing when I was his age, and so it, it's. I think it's one of these uh, opportunities that kids have to really grow up. You know, I think the military is a close second to to what you actually experience and and uh, and how you grow up in. Uh, 
in those two years. But, you know, he's living in a foreign country. He learned to speak a foreign language. He's in Denmark, which has been kind of cool for us, just uh, given the fact that our ancestry comes from Denmark on both sides for my wife and I. Um, and so he's been able to visit some ancestral homes and do some different things there while he while he was there as well. So it's really cool. I mean, not not many people in the world speak Danish, so he, he won't have much chance to use that uh, after he gets home. But still, the fact that he was able to, to learn that and converse and, and, you know, live for two years in a foreign country uh, as a guest has been a great experience for him. So neat. And that, that opportunity to serve, right? You two have talked about that a lot on uh, most of your segments, Yeah, uh, how to be in service. And that's really where you kind of cut your chops in a mission <laughs> Yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you and your wife have been together forever. Yeah, we we got married in August of 1998. So we've been we've been married for 22 years, and uh, like I said, 20 year old son, and then 17 year old daughter that's in her senior year at Highland High School. Yeah, the senior year. Uh, you know, it's COVID right now, so it's kind of a different situation. How's she managing yeah. all that? Uh, s- pretty well. I mean, they started it out hybrid. Now they're in in school full time. They haven't had a ton of cases, given that they've got a student body of almost 4,000. Um, I I think it's pretty great to see that they've been able to control it pretty well. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of things have been canceled. um, And if they haven't been canceled, they've been modified. So, you know, they're canceling dances, which I think is tough as a senior to to have those things uh, canceled. Um, The dive season. So she's a she's a diver. She's actually a four year letterman in in dive. And she was the captain of the team this year, even though she didn't participate um, because of some concussions. And so um, it's just been a little different, I think, but she's done a pretty good job of taking it in stride, and she's kind of got her plan now, and she's planning on going to BYU-Idaho uh, up in Rexburg, Idaho. So It's exciting. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's different times. Well, I'm going to circle back to you in just a moment and ask you about um, what you're most excited about or what you love the most about hosting your own show. Yeah. And that also, you know, why? what's the benefit of it for you? Uh, but before we circle back to you, let's have Landon get us caught up on you. Tell, give us the 411 about Landon Mance. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so Austin left something out. He, uh, he also gets his adrenaline kicks right now from uh, doing donuts in his 1976 Mini. I was <laughs> what a cute little car. Did you see it out front? I, I, not today, but I have seen. I was walking out one day shortly after you guys were done. I had to get to a meeting. He's like, "Hey, check out my car. It's parked right, right next to him. I love it." Yeah. Yeah, so I, I fun. picked up Landon at the airport in it today. So and he so was, he did donuts. I, I, I'm sure he does. You know. <laughs> but not he, today with you not in the car. Today, no, <laughs> it's a cute little vehicle, though. What a fun. And uh, your story about that is really cool. We'll have to make sure we weave that in, too. Yeah. So tell us about you. You don't have teenagers, but you're busy. Well, actually, oh, I, I, you do. I do. My stepson, yes. is. Uh, he just turned 18 in October. And is he home with you guys? Uh, he lives with his dad full yeah. time now, but his dad just lives... Uh, you know, handful of miles down the road. That's He's, right. He lived with us full time for a couple years prior to just, you know, us shipping him over to Pop's house for for the remainder of his uh, high school 18. career. So he's a senior this year as well. He is, yeah, yeah. And how's he managed the whole? Um, he's he's doing he's good. Yeah. You know, um, I think he he's kind of uh, he's a pretty chill kid. He just kind of goes with the flow. So I don't think he's been that affected by all of this. Mm-hmm. Um. He does not prefer the online school, but I think he's, you know, he's pretty indifferent for the most part. So My kiddo's the same way. So he had been, you know, started online, then they were in person, and right before the holiday, Kyrene called and went back to online. So today is his first day uh, sitting at home again. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. tough. It's, and, and same thing, very chill, very uh, all advanced classes. But would prefer to be in person. But what are you going to do? Yep. yep. Yeah. Yep. So I, 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 I apologize. I forgot that you had an older kiddo, yeah. but you are a very busy dad these I, days. I am. Yeah. So uh, before we get to that, which I certainly will, because that's the, the light of my life right now. But um, yeah, so I am a Southern California boy. Grew up um, in uh, North County, San Diego. And pretty much lived at the beach. And much like Austin, um, extreme sports have been a big part of my life even though Austin has a couple years on me um, I've actually been snowboarding as well for 26 years I started snowboarding when I was 10 where in would you do uh, it? we'd go um, out to uh, San Bernardino uh, yeah. Big Bear okay yeah so I, I uh, in high school I used to drive up for the day I would drive two two and a half hours and I would snowboard for the day and 
you know, somehow after being, you know, so exhausted, I would find my way, way, my way home another two and a half hours. But yeah, I've been a big snowboarder, been obsessed with dirt bikes since I was five or six years old. And finally, uh, you know, when I was seven or eight, talked my parents into buying me a little, it was like a 1970 Honda mini trail 50. So maybe Austin, uh, maybe that was his first bike as well. (laughs) So, um, yeah. And just a, just a big sports guy. You know, I, I played a lot of, um, outdoor sports growing up. I was a big soccer guy and, and then, um, uh, went to school. Oh, I w- actually bounced around a little bit, but then I settled and I went to school at uh, Cal State Long Beach and I was a marketing major. And I always tell people that I'm, I'm really glad that I did marketing because halfway through my program, I realized that, uh, I really wanted nothing to do with, <laughs> with marketing, but, uh, Loved loved going to school there. Loved living in in uh, Long Beach, California. And when I was living there, I did an internship for a guy who was a uh, financial advisor at the time. It was still City Smith Barney, I believe, before they, you know, merged or changed their name again. So, did an internship and said, "Hey, you know, I think I can do this guy's job," but definitely did not want to do it there because the culture there was not a good fit for me. Um, I like people. I like talking to people. I like collaborating and, you know, um, bouncing ideas off and learning next to people. And, and the culture there was nothing of that sort. So, um, ended up getting hired by a a national firm. That's where I got all my licenses. That would have been 2009. And then, um, ended up moving to Southern Utah and about two, this would have been uh, 2010, two weeks after I moved there, I met Tia, uh, my now wife, and she's always lived in Las Vegas. So um, I was working for a friend of mine in Southern Utah, and then 18 months later, decided to uh, move down to Vegas and get back into the uh, financial services arena, which is where my, my true passion lies, and um, worked for a bank for a couple of years, and then I started my own practice in September of 2015, which is right about when Austin and I met, probably oh. late late 2015, early 2016. He was kind of a a hybrid. He was he had a corporate role, and then he also had a, his own individual practice. And so uh, him and I got hooked up and just uh, started building a relationship, you know, over the years, and uh, both kind of. Uh, came to the same realization that we had this passion and really this drive for serving small business owners. And so the last couple of years, as we've gotten closer as, um, you know, as colleagues and associates and friends, um, you know, we've made this decision to kind of make things a little bit more formal and we're kind of, we're working towards, uh, you know, operating under the same marketing name and really becoming, you know, true partners. And so I, you know, we're hoping to make that announcement here, like in the next couple months, just working through some, some kind of final details. But, uh, yeah, the really exciting stuff, uh, my wife and I had twins. Uh, they just turned seven months, uh, Harper and Hendrix. And, um, they are just the funnest, sweetest, cutest little babies. And we're just loving every second um, even the seconds uh, at two or three, four or five, six <laughs> o'clock in the morning, waking up with them. But uh, they're they're healthy. They're doing great. Uh, my wife is uh, staying home and able to take care of them, and so uh, she's just incredible and um, working her little booty off to give these babies a incredible life. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of my my personal story. So good. Seven months. Wow. Yep. Yeah. And they were in the hospital for a while. They were premature. And yep. They spent uh, seven weeks in the hospital. Um, Austin and I were actually, just before the show this, uh, this morning, we were talking about uh, health insurance. And, you know, I'm in the process of potentially changing my health insurance just to a different plan. And uh, we were talking about their hospital stay. And I asked him how much he, he thought that their stay was. And his guess was 100000 And you laughed. And I told them to multiply that by 20 and that's no. what, yeah, it, their bill was $2 million. Now, that's their total bill. No, no, of course, right. we didn't have to pay anywhere, even remotely near 
to that amount. But uh, yeah, their total hospital bill was $2 million. Wow. Yeah. Incredible, huh? It, yeah, that's a whole nother segment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, well, I'm so pleased to hear that they're growing strong and, and mama's doing such a great job. That's yep. great. Thank yeah. you. And we love, you know, I know it's a lot for you to have to come or choose to come to Arizona one, about once a month, yep. but it's really fun, of course, for us. And I only get to see you for an hour, yep. but uh, I know it makes a, a great difference for the two of you as you make some final decisions around how to work as a partnership. So yep. good. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Uh, so let's let's talk about Tycoons of Small Biz on Business Radio X. Uh, you know what what's what do you love about that? Either one of you or both of you, and um, what is the benefit to to you and your business? But also, how do you believe it serves the business community? Yeah, so I mean, I would uh, just jump in and say that, and I think I mentioned this on last week's episode. Actually, Landon was trying to convince me for at least six months before we started the podcast to uh, to start a podcast together. And I just wasn't convinced that we would have the time to do it. And, and the reality is Business Radio X makes it easy for us. I mean, we, we literally show up, record, and, and you guys do everything else. And so if it weren't for that, I don't know that we could pull it off. If we had to produce it ourselves and figure out all the other, you know, ins and outs of how to do it, I don't, I don't think we could do it. Um, but for us, I mean, obviously knowing that b- small business is a, is a passion of ours, um, and that's where we focus, it, it made all the sense in the world to just have it be a program about highlighting small businesses and having them come in and tell their story and provide them a platform to get their story out there. And um, for me, that's the biggest reason for for me to get here every Tuesday and and to have a a small business owner in here is to see what it does for them um, and to see, you know, how grateful they are, obviously, to have that platform. But it's a great learning experience for us to to see the way that they're running their business and what they're doing to grow their business, even in a very difficult time. And, you know, the, the strides that they're making and the steps that they're taking to, to find success today and always, uh, that's, that's the big motivating factor for, for me personally. Uh, the other side, I think, you know, just for, it's, it's fun. I mean, honestly, I was telling a, a client of mine yesterday who was also a past guest on the program that, you know, you also get to kind of live out this childhood dream of, you know, gosh, yeah, I could be on the radio or I could be a sports broadcaster or, you know, whatever. And, and you get to kind of live that out every week as well and in, in having these guests in. And so it, it's fun, but the, the, the main motivation is, is highlighting those businesses. Yeah, love it. Landon, what would you add to that? Yeah, so um, a couple things. Uh, first, I would say uh, I'll echo what Austin said about, you know, Phoenix Business Radio X, which really you know, our interaction is, is you, you are Phoenix, Phoenix business radio X to us at least. And really the value that you have brought to this show has been much more than just simply being our, our producer. Uh, for example, um, you know, Austin and I, uh, you know, I'm out here once a month and we are, uh, you know, we have, you know, typically several meetings every time I'm out here And you've been gracious enough to let us come here and use the conference rooms. Um, And so you've just, you've done a wonderful job with the show, but you've also, you know, uh, just been so gracious with uh, your time and introductions to other, you know, great business people and, uh, you know, letting us use the the studio for other means. So thank you for for that. So, um, yeah, so it has been a lot of fun. I, I would say one of the things that, uh, you know, really stands out for me is, is yes, it's, it's been great to give these small business owners a platform to come on and talk, you know, and tell their story and promote their business. Obviously that's essentially the whole reason that we did this, but on a personal level, you know, Austin and I have gotten to know each other a lot more on this show because we've had so many conversations with guests you know, leading up to the show, during the show, and after the show. So a lot of stuff has come out about the two of us, you know, that we didn't really know about each other. So uh, that's actually been a lot of fun. Um, And, you know, doing the show together, uh, you know, Austin and I, you know, one of the things that we decided on when we were going to do the show was, you know, we want this to be fun. We want to laugh. We want to have a good time. You know, Austin and I are not, you know, super serious dudes, you know? Um, so we like to, um, banter back and forth and have a good time. And, uh, you know, 
uh, give each other some some digs here and there but uh, we 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 love doing that so that's that's been a lot of fun and uh, we've met so many incredible people the last because we've been doing this now about uh six months uh, almost seven months i believe and um in the beginning i i kind of thought that doing a weekly show i was a little um hesitant i thought that was going to be uh too much because you know austin and i are both you know running our own individual you know practices and uh, now we're kind of growing this thing, you know, together. And so I was a little hesitant, a little reluctant, but I'm really glad that we did because we have met so many incredible, you know, business owners throughout this process. And from a, from a, a business standpoint for Austin and I, um, it's, been, it's been wonderful because we've had the opportunity to shake hands and build relationships with all these, you know, um, people that we have come on the show. And it's, it's led to some really wonderful business opportunities for Austin and I. So the whole experience so far has been, you know, a 10 out of 10. Let's just end the segment here. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> As selfishly. Uh, I love what you both have shared. It is so important for business owners to have the spotlight in their direction. And big media doesn't pay attention to business owners unless they're doing something wrong, typically. Right. Yeah. Uh, or they're so far in the stratosphere financially uh, that that a lot of us are unable to relate to those mega successes. And yet, to use Austin's phrase, these business owners, these tycoons of small biz are the backbone of America. And, and so it's critical that we share their stories. And, and I, I, I think, Landon, you were the one who alluded to it. The, well, you both did, actually. The joy that they have when they come in and they spend time talking to the two of you and just really like we're doing today, right? Just sharing, like, tell me a little bit about yourself personally and what's going on in your family life and what do you like to do when you're not working and what's the story from, you know, the the ground up? How did you become a success with your business is really what it's all about. And the nuggets that we've all learned through uh, listening to your guests have been phenomenal. I mean, the, uh, every time I'm producing, I'm sitting over here working, but there's not a, an episode that I don't have to turn around and like, oh my gosh, I got to write it down and <laughs> like, okay, I got to commit this to memory and learn so much. Uh, and um, Landon, you and I hadn't met. I don't think we had even connected yet when Austin was selecting or talking about the, the name of the show. Mm-hmm. And I think you were a part of it, but I didn't have that opportunity to connect with you at that point. But tycoons of small biz. So tell me about the word tycoons. How does that, why is that important? How does that fit for the caliber of guests that you have been inviting and that are now coming to you and saying, how do I get on this show? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was, you know, I, I did spend some time thinking about it. I, uh, I ran it past some people in my Vistage group to get their feedback uh, on it. But, you know, I, I think the word tycoon, it, it's not used every day nowadays. And so it's unique, obviously. But th- the reality is, you know, you think of a tycoon, you think of the old oil tycoons and, you know, or the railroad tycoons or, you know, these people that, that kind of started these industries and, and grew tremendous wealth. Um, but nowadays, ev- everybody just kind of thinks that the, the best business leaders in America are, are CEOs or, you know, C-level executives for these large organizations. And the reality is there are so many super talented leaders running small and medium-sized businesses. And I would put many of the owners of, of small businesses up against the CEOs of large organizations day in and day out. I, I don't believe that these these CEOs of large organizations have anything on on the CEOs or founders and owners of, of small businesses. And so tycoons just seem to, to fit. Yeah, it's a fun name. Yeah. It's fitting. It, and I'm thinking about all the guests that you've had. We've had 30 episodes. Yeah, right around right there. Right around yeah. 30 episodes. And sometimes we have just one guest. Other times you have a couple. But uh, it's they all fit, I think, that description. Tycoons of small biz. These are folks who are making it. Uh, day in, day out, and doing extremely well uh, financially, in addition to serving not only their employees, but their customer and client base, and and giving back to their community, uh, a lot of them. So, yeah, excellent. Um, You guys are financial planners, and you focus a lot of your efforts on working with business owners, right, to the point of why why you even started this this show. Um, why, Why focus on business owners specifically? Yeah, so um, 
Austin and I both, um, and I, I won't, you know, try to tell his backstory, but we have very similar backstories in the sense that we we come from families of entrepreneurs. Uh, my grandfather was an entrepreneur. Um, he was an inventor, and he was a real estate guy, and he started and sold multiple um, businesses, and he had a lot of, you know, property and just had his hands in all kinds of stuff. And um, my dad's been a an entre- you know, 45 year, uh, commercial developer and entrepreneur. Uh, my older sister who we've had on the show, Dana, she's, um, she's got a really successful women's clothing boutique out of Southern California. So, um, you know, it, it is cliche to say, but entrepreneurship literally, I mean, it runs in our, in our DNA. I mean, um, everybody, you know, uh, all my business mentors have been mostly family, you know, entrepreneurs. So, um, when I came over and, uh, and I partnered with Lincoln Financial Advisors, who is our, our broker dealer, when I partnered with them to start my business, um, I get, I got introduced to this, to the world of serving private business owners. And so that has evolved for the last, you know, five, five and a half years. And it, it really just comes down to, there is just, tremendous value that we can bring to a private business owner. Uh, we can bring value to our non-business owner clients, and we, we, we do that pretty, pretty well, I, I think. But when we're working and serving private business owners, um, there's just so many additional areas that we can help them focus on uh, that um, it, it makes it interesting. We're constantly studying and, and, you know, doing different things to further our education and our training and our resources. And also just to go back to our broker dealer, you know, Lincoln Financial Advisors, they are, um, when it comes to serving private business owners, the, the resources that they have available to their, their planners, that focus on private business owners is just, I mean, it, it is incredible. And uh, I, I really feel like it is unmatched. Um, there's, uh, you know, some things they don't do quite as well as some other firms, but when it comes to that arena, playing in the business owner arena, um, I, I think they do it better than anybody. And so um, that trickles down to our abilities to serve our clients because we do have just incredible training, incredible resources, and uh, just the platform that allows us to, to serve uh, you know, private business owners and their families, you know, better than anybody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would just add to that that uh, you know, small business owners are are an underserved community. the The reality is most most uh, financial professionals or financial advisors, financial planners, whatever they you know they want to call themselves, um, they're just out there either selling products or or wanting to manage money. And the reality is many small business owners don't have a lot of assets to manage in terms of outside investments, right? And so just the way that we work with our business owners is is different in that we're approaching their business as an investment, helping them understand how it's an investment, how it how it's important for them to diversify their investments, right? Because all of their net worth or a very large portion of their net worth is tied up in the business. And so we focus on helping them prepare for the next stage in life. And and some of that is helping them prep their business for sale in the future. Some of it's helping them, you know, protect it today. Some of it's helping them plan for maybe your business is never going to be able to be sold. And so what do we need to do to, to put a plan in place? Um, and so our, our focus is really around the planning itself and the advice that we give. And that's where we derive our income from is, is being paid for the advice that we provide to these business owners. And, and quite frankly, most financial professionals don't provide that advice. They're not set up for it. It's not their business model. And so we focus a, a lot of our efforts around that. And, and I would just echo what Landon said about Lincoln Financial. I mean, we're both part of what's called the Business Intelligence Institute internally at Lincoln. And it, and it truly is that. I mean, it's a group of the top planners in, inside of Lincoln that are getting together and they're putting together materials and we're learning together and we have study groups. And, you know, Landon and I are currently working on a new designation. for It's called the Certified Business Exit Consultant designation. And, and so we've we've gone through <laughs> hours and hours of training and then, and then we'll take a, a four-hour exam in a few weeks here to kind of 
you know, as the capstone of that, and, uh, and assuming we pass, then we 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 receive that designation. We're able to use it, but it, it's just something that's different in our in our complete approach. It's 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 all about the business owner and protecting what they have built, and making sure that they're able to meet the goals that they have for themselves, and not just about managing money. So. Tycoons of Small Biz, of course, is not just the only show here at Business Radio X. I think, I don't know. How it many, is the best. It is show the best. It goes without saying. We've already <laughs> we've already spoken to that, right? Uh, I get to hear whether I'm hosting or producing and listening to a host like you guys a lot of stories and um, successes from business owners, and I'm still surprised how many business owners have not started their business with the end in mind. So can you speak to that? Because we're talking a little bit about exit strategy and succession planning. That's really, I think, one of the gifts that you bring to your clients. Let's talk a little bit how why that's important and, and really, a, am I right in thinking that there's, I mean, I know even with the studio for me, I've, I've sold a business with some partners not too long ago, which gave me the catalyst and opportunity to open Business Radio X. But even starting this business, I just went to work. <laughs> And, and now, three years in, I'm, and you know, we talked about it a few times, but now I'm like, oh my gosh, I really am 50, I'll be 56 this month. I, I need to start looking at, like, what, what am I going to do when I'm done? Yeah. So speak to that, if you would, please. Uh, am I right in thinking that a lot of folks haven't given that thought from the very beginning? And, and when is it a good time to start uh, having that in mind as you're working your, working your business? Yeah. <sighs> Don't quote me on this, but I, I believe that only 20 or 25 percent of successful private business owners actually have some kind of succession plan, which means the majority of us uh, do not. And you you basically just nailed it. The reason that um, most people do not have any type of um, succession, exit, transition plan, um, I'll, I'll use the word succession you know, throughout this conversation. So mm-hmm. maybe Austin will use something different, but I'll use succession. So the reason people do not have a succession plan is they are too busy running their businesses. And um, it just is not a thought until it becomes a thought. <laughs> and yeah. typically that um, the catalyst for that line of thinking comes from something um usually not that positive. Mm-hmm. Um, an illness, a partner dispute, a death in the family, um, a divorce. So there's a multitude of different things. A that change in the economy, a pandemic. Abs- that's, that's never happened. <laughs> right, and it never, stuff up. it never will, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so typically it is, um, it is something negative that drives them to start thinking about that. Um, so um, Austin and I, you know, we're, we're kind of on a mission because, um, and I, I'm stealing this, you know, uh, phraseology from the Exit Planning Institute, which is a really great uh, organization that I'm involved with. Um, but what they say is, you know, as I'm, a, I'm also a certified exit planning advisor, and that's a designation through the Exit Planning Institute. So what they say to their SIPAs is, you guys have a responsibility to go out into the marketplace and change the mindset of business owners when it comes to succession planning, right? Because when you talk to an owner about exit planning, you know, that's, that's a scary four letter, you know, word that Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them don't uh, take well to. So we're on this mission to go out into the marketplace and to help to change the mindset of business owners to helping them understand that having a good succession strategy, that it's just good business strategy, Mm -hmm. right? Because essentially what you're doing when you're doing succession planning is you're looking at your business through the lens of a buyer. And by doing that, it's allowing you to identify all of the pitfalls, all of the risks that are um, you know, prevalent or uh, may become prevalent in your business in the near future, and then to, to address and to start fixing those. Because, you know, Karen, if, if somebody walked in here off of the street, and I have 
no idea what this what your you know little business could be worth but i'm just going to use a number Mm -hmm. so somebody walks in off the street and says karen you know your business i love what you're doing you know you seem to be doing really well and you know um i'd like to talk to you about you know buying your business and you know your eyes light up and oh okay well let's yeah i didn't really think about it but let's have that conversation so on the outside your business uh, it, it appears to be attractive right but being attractive and being actually ready to be sold is a totally Completely different, different story. And so by having your business actually being in a place that's ready to be sold, um, it puts an owner in a position to where when Joe or Mary Smith walks in to your office off the street and mm-hmm. says, hey, I'd like to talk to you about buying your business, that you don't miss out on potentially a once in a lifetime opportunity, right? Because selling a private business, first of all, about 75 to 80% of private businesses that list for sale for a myriad of different reasons will never transact or be sold. 75%? Yeah. Yep. And, and some argue that it's a little bit higher. So, um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really high number. And uh, there's way too many reasons to even start listing them. I mean, there's dozens and dozens and dozens. Typically, those reasons come to the surface through the due diligence process, right? So, and that is the stage where you and I have agreed, you know, as a buyer and seller to move forward with a transaction. But during the, we'll call it the research phase, Mm -hmm. diving deep into the business, the financials, the operations, et cetera, all the skeletons start to (laughs) uh, show themselves and the deal's fall apart usually at that point so interesting and and so many of us business or business owners are so emotionally invested in our business I we wouldn't know what blind spots we have what areas that that we're not focusing on that a buyer would be interested in yep. uh, or even how to articulate it and explain it or or what what documents to show and prepare for uh, yeah fascinating I would love to keep this conversation going, but I also want to make sure that we get uh, time in for a commercial from our sponsor. This feels like a good time to do that, and then we'll be back with more conversations with Austin and Landon. Whether you're an established local company or a brand new startup, you can count on GBS to be part of your family. We're not just any benefits consulting firm, we're GBS. We have nearly 30 years of experience in group benefits a strong sense of purpose, and it shows. GBS, believe in something better. gbsbenefits.com. So we're here today with uh, me, Karen Nowicki, as host or interviewer. Uh, And we've turned the uh, table a little bit with Austin and Landon, who typically host Tycoons of Small Biz. And today they are my guests, or they are their own guests. How's that? (laughs) (laughs) And we're having a conversation around uh, business exit strategy and succession planning. So I know I've shared with you guys before that at the same time that I opened the studio, my husband opened an automotive shop. It has since closed uh, last year, so two years in business, and had... I believe, great potential to be wildly successful. Uh, Customers loved him. Um, Great mechanics. Mike had been in business forever. Um, And I had kept saying, you know, let's let's think with the end in mind. Like, if this is not the business for you forever or one to hand down to Ivan down the road, we ought to be focusing on this business so that there's something to show for all of your hard work at the end of the day. Um, and, and we didn't plan effectively with that in mind. Uh, so regardless, whether it's an auto shop or a radio studio or a restaurant or anywhere in between, um, you know, some sort of selling widgets and, and a manufacturing business, whatever it is, um, at what point does a business owner, if they haven't done it in the very beginning, be, th- be thinking about how do I... Um, put value on my business and how do I prepare for what, w- when I am ready to retire, what, what do I want to do? If it's not from the very beginning when they open that door and, you know, put their, <laughs> their open for business sign up metaphorically, when should they start thinking about what it's going to look like when they're ready to, to move on? Yeah. We, we tell clients all the time that they, that they should be engaging 
somebody, whether it's us or somebody else, to help them prep for that sale at least three years prior to selling the business, at least. Uh, We would prefer that it be five to ten years ahead of of selling that business so that the business truly is uh, in the perfect situation to be sold, Mm -hmm. right? And and there's a lot that goes into that. We've got to always realize that whoever's coming in to buy your business, even though they may love your business, they may be a competitor and they know your business, who, you know, whoever it is, they're buying your business based on the opportunity for future cash flows from your business, right? That's what they care about. When, when the dust settles, that's really what they care about. And so they're, they're valuing it based on what they can generate in c- future cash flows based on what it's doing today, but what they think they can do for that business to add fuel to the fire to grow the business into the future. And so it's up to us as financial planners to help you get that business in a spot to where it shows very, very good cash flows. And, and quite honestly, this is the hardest pill for business owners to swallow is to get your business to a point where it does not need you to be successful, right? That's the hardest part because you built it from the ground up. It's all, you know, blood, sweat and tears that you put into this business and you're the CEO, you're the founder, you're whatever, and you're running the day to day and you want to be in charge of this and you're the best at this and, you know, that sort of deal. But your business actually becomes worth quite a bit more if you're not needed day to day and that business can run without you. If you can take a six month sabbatical and your business either stays the same or increases, then we know that your business is in a, in a perfect spot to be sold. I'll I'll just add something to that. And, and he, he, he nailed it, you know, there's a, I'll call him a, he's not, he's not a friend, a, a, a counterpart. He does what we do for this other firm. And, um, I've, I've learned a lot from him. Um, and he calls it being operationally irrelevant. Mm. Yeah. Which I absolutely love. So I, I'd I've, be okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> abs- I've, I, I've stolen that, uh, that term from him just because it's, it's so, uh, it's so fitting and so easy to wrap your head, you know, around because, a lot of private business owners, uh, Karen, um, like yourself and uh, like Austin and I, right? Our our businesses, there, there's no business, right? Without us, essentially, right? And so that that's what we're we're trying to do. And again, most of the businesses that Austin and I are serving, they're not, um, you know, uh, one or you know, one or two person, you know, small businesses. I mean, most of the businesses we're serving are five to fifty million dollars in revenue so kind of the the lower end of the middle market uh, that's kind of our, our our bread and butter and often multiple employees oh yeah, oh, yeah. definitely yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah most most of the businesses we're serving are i don't know what 10 to 100 employees mm-hmm. would probably be the you know the typical range um and so just to just to kind of piggyback on what austin was saying you know um that that is something that is super duper important because when when, when you're playing in that space and somebody's going to come in to buy your business, you know, they're, they're a pretty sophisticated, you know, buyer, right? If you're buying a business that has five to $50 million in revenue and it's generating a couple million dollars in profit per year, um, you know, you're going to be buying this business for, you know, um, you know, eight, eight or nine, you know, eight, eight figures, you know? So, um, the, the buyers are pretty sophisticated, and yeah, like Austin said, they are, they're not buying you. They're going to come in and they're going to tell you that they love you and that they want you to be around afterwards, but no, they, <laughs> they don't. They, they, they care about your business and they care about the future cash flows, like Austin said, of the business. And uh, they're typically buying your business as an investment, whereas a lot of um, you know, really small businesses – because uh, the, actually the majority of small businesses actually don't have any employees. They're just a one-man band. And um, so, uh, yeah, so we, we help to make them operationally, operationally irrelevant. That can um, increase the value of a business substantially, but it's hard because you have to give up control and you have to be a really good delegator. And a lot of these business owners that we work with, you know, they're – they bootstrap their businesses. They started these things from the ground up and um, it's hard to, to give up that control sometimes, but that's uh, something that Austin and I focus a lot on is, is 
helping them to get to that point where, you know, they can, they can take that vacation. They can step away from the business for weeks or even months without it, <laughs> you know, crashing and burning. If, if we're, if we're not planning to sell the business and we want to pass it along as a legacy to our kids or brother or sister, or whatever, is it equally important to have a financial planner, some, someone like you guys kind of helping as advisors and, and, and if so, why? Yeah, I would say definitely. The, the reality is if your business is your entire net worth, right, then you've got to plan in some other fashion, right? So if, if you're planning on gifting it to the next generation and you don't plan on, you know, taking any sort of a purchase price or, you know, cash flows from the business afterwards, then you have to have planned outside of the business for you yeah. to be able to live, right? Social Security newsflash, it's not going to be enough, right? I don't believe it's going anywhere, but it's not going to be enough. Um, and so we've, we've got a plan for our own retirement. And so you, we're either going to come in and help you plan for it that way, or we're going to help put together a plan to where there is either, like you said, a management buyout or a family purchase, any, any sort of a plan that can be put in place so that it still funds your retirement, but then you can also then have it passed to the next generation. Yeah, and with high, high net worth clients who, again, are so immersed in the day-to-day -day business and doing well and seeing the fruits of their labor, hopefully, <laughs> uh, or just keeping all balls in the air to keep operations running, uh, these are topics and conversations and really expertise and a skill set that, that many business owners don't naturally have, Correct. which is why it's so important to work with, with you guys. Yeah, and I would even add to that, and Landon may have something to say here too, but you know, most small business owners are very, very smart individuals but they're smart in their area, right? And so just like we hire people to do certain things that we're not good at, same thing would apply here where you hire a professional to help you put a plan in place and then push that, that plan forward, right? You know, I talk about people paying us for our advice, but then I would say after we've put together that plan, the most important job that Landon and I have is to act as a catalyst to actually get the plan done. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I could I could share a couple of quick stories about business owners that didn't do that and had to deal with exactly what Landon talked about earlier, whether it's you know, it's not something good. Right. Either it's a partner that passed away. I've had that situation. It's a partner that was diagnosed with terminal cancer and is still around probably for several years, but they weren't prepared to buy him out. They didn't have enough disability coverage in in place for him to be able to live comfortably and they, of course, want to take care of him. But, you know, those are just some examples of the types of things that happen every single day. And if there's not a plan for it, it can cripple the business and potentially even put the business out of business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in our case, that's what uh, Mike was ill and we had to close the business. I mean, yeah. done. <laughs> yeah. Within yeah. within two weeks. Yeah. Done. And and great and we left great customers hanging. And, you know, I mean, there was a lot of potential there. Uh, and a lot of joy, just a, a missed opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll add something. So um, you asked if you're going to transition your business to managers or family, if you, you know, if it, if it still requires some, some planning. And I would say if you're going to go that route, it requires additional planning because mm. if you think about it, if you're going to take your business out to the market and you're going to try to sell your business on the open market, what is the business owner typically trying to do, right? They're trying to get max value for their business, right? The exact opposite happens when you're going to transfer your business to family because usually when you're doing a family transfer, it, it, it's usually some kind of a tax or a state planning play is involved because you're usually trying to, <laughs> you're essentially trying to transfer, aka sell your business at a deep, deep discount, right? So that your family can essentially take your business owner over, but not have to pay top dollar and all, you know, the taxes and all, all that stuff, you know, all that's involved in a transaction. So I would say that you even need to do more planning to ensure that you are going to be financially independent before you undertake something like that, right? Because if there's a business owner that owns this great business, uh, they're really dependent upon the cash flow of the business to support their lifestyle. And all of a sudden you transfer the business to, you know, Johnny and, 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 you know, Johnny Jr. And, and Sally, 
And, uh, you know, the, uh, as your children, uh, you're kind of putting your future financial independence in their hands, right? So if the business doesn't perform the way that it is supposed to, well, you're in a tough spot if you're not financially independent at that point. You might have to step back in and start running the business again, right? So oh, I've heard plenty of stories like that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I would, I would, you know, say that if you're going to go that route, that it requires just as much, if not more, planning well, well in advance of something like that actually happening. What yeah. kind? Oh, I, I was just going to add real quick that. You know, financial independence is extremely important in any business sale, no matter who we're selling it to, because it puts you in a better negotiating position at that point, mm -hmm. because you're selling the business knowing that you don't have to take whatever offer comes your way. You know that you're already financially independent, and so if the offer doesn't make sense or the partnership doesn't make sense or, you know, the number's too small or the, you, know, you think the number's, you know, too high even – uh, and you want to just do it, you know, like a family family deal. That financial independence puts you in the driver's seat, and and that's a big part of of the planning that we do is make sure that you're financially independent outside of the business. I think we're dancing around this, not not on purpose, but as a business owner, I keep looking at what are other avenues of income for me. But I've been looking at it through the lens of through Phoenix Business Radio X or my coaching practice. Um, when I work with with you guys, would we, do you help business owners then look at how else to diversify? Maybe that's not the right word, but you're helping to look at what is a long-term plan for retirement and savings and wealth. It's it's the whole picture and not just the business, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we. Uh, sorry to cut you off there, Landon. We we spend an awful lot of time on, you know, what what do we do to make sure that you're again financially independent outside of the business yep. and so you know how can we save you taxes today but also save for the future how can we you know really diversify your holdings in the business or your net worth mm -hmm. away from being 80 percent plus the business and let's get it to where the business is maybe 50 percent of your net worth or less and then we've got a complete other set of investments over here that can provide for you and your income needs at a later date perfect yeah, yeah. So uh, Austin, Austin nailed it. I'll just say it a little bit differently. So if we're if we're looking at a a business owner, right? Typically, like Austin said, they have a large majority of their wealth, their net worth, tied up in their business. Usually, it's somewhere between seventy five and we've seen ninety eight, ninety nine percent. Um, so if you look at it like this, so what one of the things that we we focus on a lot is helping to shift wealth and net worth from the business balance sheet onto the personal balance sheet. Mm -hmm. And there's a multitude of different ways that we go about doing that, but mm -hmm. maybe that provides a, a little bit of clarity there. Yeah. yeah. We're almost at the top of the hour, but I have a couple more questions I want to make sure we get to before we scoot. Okay. Uh, we... Well, I've heard you guys talk about mindset, not necessarily in our today conversation, but previously. You guys help business owners change their mindset when it comes to succession planning. I don't even think I'm pronouncing that word correctly, but we'll just let it go. Succession <laughs> planning. Uh, what do you mean by that? I mean, you've alluded to it, but let's really talk about mindset as it relates to business owners. How do you help shift? So, so Landon's answer might be a little bit different than, than mine, but um, that mind that mindset shift is to actually viewing their business as an investment and understanding the risk that they have in that investment day in and day out. And, and business owners don't think it, right? I mean, you've been running a business for 10 years. It, this is just my business. There's no risk. What are you talking about, right? But when an outside investor comes in and looks at it, they do start to see all the different types of risks that are inside of that business. And they see that there's a huge concentration of your wealth mm -hmm. in that business. And so it's about understanding your business truly is an investment. Let's treat it as such. Let's understand what the risks are, protect against those risks, and then build a net worth, like, like Landon just said, move from the business balance sheet to the personal balance sheet. Okay. Good. So we have been, I mean, this is, we've been talking about this all along. We're just now calling it, this is a mindset shift. Yeah. What would you add to that, Landon? I mean, not much. I, I think he, he nailed it. You know, um, you know, business owners, like Austin said, they don't, they don't look at their business as an investment. 
but everybody else, you know, any potential buyer, that that is exactly what they are looking at your business as, as an investment. Mm -hmm. And for their investment, they expect to get a certain ROI, right? Return on their uh, investment. And so by helping these owners change their mindset when it comes to succession and, you know, transition, exit planning, whatever you want to call it, uh, it just, it puts them in a much better spot, a spot of confidence, right? Because if they, if we've helped them to shift a lot of their wealth from the business onto their personal balance sheet, now they go into a, uh, into a potential business sale negotiation with a lot more confidence and clarity, which, you know, hopefully ultimately will result to a much more successful transaction, whatever that that means to that specific client. Anything that I haven't thought to ask or that you kind of wanted to make sure we covered today? I know that you guys have a special offer that you're making available through the end of this year. So we'll talk about that. But before we close with that, is there any, any aspect of how you serve uh, your clients and or the show that we haven't touched on? You know, I think the only thing that I would add is that the big, motto or creed, so to speak, that Landon and I work with every single day is that we serve the client first, last, and always, and let everything else take care of itself. Mm -hmm. And so we go into our, into our relationships with any of these business owners as we're going to serve them, we're going to help them, and we'll figure out how we get paid later, but we're here to help uh, serve the business owners. And, and, you know, we truly believe in the, in the business owner community, we know that regardless of what's going on uh, economically or politically or, you know, the pandemic, any of that kind of stuff, that it's it's small business owners that are going to lead us out of this. And we're fully committed and in and, and, and 100% with these business owners. Mm. So I'll add something real quick. And, and this is going to be news to Austin. He doesn't know this yet. <laughs> so this is going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I don't think I've ever publicly um, mentioned this. Uh, s- s- the goal is in 2021... Um, Austin and I uh, are going to undertake an initiative and it's going to be a philanthropic minded initiative uh, around business owners. And um, essentially what we're going to do is one time per quarter, we're going to gather a whole bunch of business owners and um, uh, we're all going to put a (laughs) hundred dollars into the pot. I'm, I'm, and business radio X is doing the same thing. I'm excited to hear this. Yeah. We're we're, we're, going to announce it on the ninth when we're all together. Keep talking. Am I stealing your thunder? No, no, because they're right. There's plenty. I mean, we, we need to show up in this way. So I'm just ecstatic and excited that you're thinking along the same lines because we're doing the same thing. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially, um, I know we're running up against time. So one time per quarter, we're going to get a whole bunch of business owners together, approximately a hundred. We're all going to put a hundred bucks in the pot, so we got a pot of ten thousand, mm-hmm. and we are going to have a couple of charities, probably three, three charities come on and do like a Shark Tank style pitch, and then we are going to cut a check for ten thousand dollars to a local charity, local to Arizona or to Nevada, because you know I'm based out of Las Vegas. Yeah. So that is an initiative that uh, we hopefully will be able to um, start in in 2021. So. I love it. So yeah. I'm a, a member of 100 Women Who Care Valley of the Sun. So it's, it's the same model, similar model. Yeah. Only this is, you know, women. And I've just been talking to the coordinators because I've been a member of the Giving Circle in Awatuki for the last two years. And I'm like, hey, we need to do this from a business and corporation and entrepreneur perspective. I have a call later this afternoon around that very conversation, same model. So I'm, I, I applaud you and I thank you because our... Our um, charitable organizations need us more now than ever. And not only that, from a business owner perspective or an executive leader, it's a great opportunity to get to know other people, people who are like-minded and want to be uh, of, of service to people in the community. So yeah. really excited to hear you guys say that. I'm just <laughs> laughing because it's just bloop, bloop, right in line yeah. with what we're doing and what I had planned to announce at our, our event. Very cool. Awesome. Now, did you know that? Because he said so there was a part of this he <laughs> you didn't know. Well, I didn't. I didn't know that he had thought about it as far as he had. But we have we yeah. have talked about the importance of giving back and and different things that we can do. And this model is a great model. I mean, it's worldwide. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's worldwide. And and I um, I know some folks again the women who are doing it here in the Valley of the Sun with four different giving circles. If you don't have anybody who can help, kind of coach and guide you to that success. 
bringing those business owners together. I can introduce you to the crew because they've been knocking it out of the park for the last couple of yeah, years. That'd be, yeah, that'd be wonderful. Very good. So uh, that's an exciting announcement for all of us. Uh, tell us then, and let's end with a special offer that you're making available through the end of this year. Well, since you just uh, made that announcement, I'll go ahead and announce uh, the special offer here. So what we're offering through the end of the year is a free informal business valuation for anybody who would be interested in having their business valued and understand what the actual valuation of their business is. It, it's, it's an important first step uh, uh, for anybody who thinks they want to sell their business in the future to understand what the true value is today. So this is a complimentary opportunity to get a valuation. And I think also inherent in that is get to know you guys and to see if that business owner is, is a good fit, right? It's mutually beneficial, I think. Yep. Yeah. And we're really great guys, so most people really <laughs> like us. <laughs> I, I would attest to that. I would agree. Awesome. Well, this has been exciting to spend the hour with you here on Tycoons of Small Biz. I, I've had the pleasure of inter in Hello, the word is interviewing. <laughs> interviewing today, Austin Peterson and Landon Mance, who typically host the show, co-host the show. Uh, you are here with Business Radio X weekly on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Uh, Arizona time, yep. whatever that is, depending on when it is. And we'll uh, look forward to the next episode uh, next week. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Karen. And where can folks find you? I know we'll have it, of course, with the podcast, but uh, where where do we find you guys? How do we stay in touch? Le yeah. LinkedIn is probably the best place to find both of us. You can search Austin Peterson CFP or Landon Mance on, on LinkedIn. You'll find us. All right. Go yep. do that. Go do that right now. Thanks, Thanks for listening. You bet. You've been listening to Tycoons of Small Biz, proudly hosted by Austin Peterson and Landon Mance. Austin and Landon are comprehensive financial planning professionals specializing in financial, estate, and succession planning for small business owners. Austin and Landon have offices in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Las Vegas, Nevada, and represent clients in 14 states throughout the country. Join Austin, Landon, and the Featured Tycoons live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here on Business Radio X and your favorite podcast platform.